Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send a float value up to the Nexion display. And we'll populate a text box and we're going to use the double to string function. That function right there. On some of the message boards you'll see, people really do not like using string values, which is kind of what I did up here. What they want you to do is they want you to take the string or that text value, that 3.567, you know, whatever the analog input is reading, and turn it into what's called a, a character array. And we have an array set up right here named result, and we're going to have it six spaces because we have the five or the three or the two and then a decimal point and then we have four after it. Well the decimal point counts as a space so three point and then four digits is a total of six. So I've created the character eight equals six. The way that this works is double two string float is you put the variable you want to convert here which in our case is float one. We're going to use the same float value in each method just so you can see the comparison. And then you put the total length. Even though you have it here, it's going to load this. So this has to be preset and these need to match. And then the second value is the decimal places. So in this case, we're going to have six total characters with four decimal places. And then we're going to place it in this result. After that, the steps are pretty much the exact same. We're going to serial print the result again. And if you noticed, in order to break it up, even though I have serial print, print ln or print line would print a new line, I put this backslash n, which does the same thing. So it's going to print this out, then it will print the result at the end of these lines, just like we did up here. I probably should have pointed out early, but we do the same thing here. The only difference is I put two backslash n's, so we'll get a space when it goes through the loop and starts over. But down here, this part here is identical to this up here. What we're going to do is we're going to print the to T1 though instead, because we have two text boxes. And I put two on there so we could show the difference, or or that there isn't a difference. The text, and then the result followed by three FS. I'm going to upload this now so you can see how it works. You can see it's printing out the values we would expect: 0.338. I set that to only be three. Let me turn off the auto scroll. I set that to only be three digits, whereas the double to string is set to be four. And if you look over here, we're getting the numbers just like we would expect. If I turn it back on, it doesn't look right now, but if I turn it back on, you'll see it's 3.382 or 0.3382. I'm going to turn the potentiometer again, and it holds. So we're getting the exact values we should get. It works pretty well. There are some things that I don't like about the um, double to string function. Go back into the Arduino. If I were to set this result up at the top, and let's say I was going to use it throughout the entire period of testing. And so I was going to use it for other examples. And so I might declare it up at the top. I might forget that I set it to a six. If I change this to an eight, which means it's gonna try and put eight characters into this result, if I just do a compile, I would expect to get an error because it's trying to write to something that's only six and it's trying to put eight values into it. But I don't, it, it, well, it works just fine. And sometimes that can be an issue because let's say you have a problem down the road and you're not getting any sort of error, it can be hard to troubleshoot. I'm going to upload this so you can see the results of changing that to an 8. I've left the auto scroll on so we can see this. This is the value we had before we sent the um, value up. And you can see what it's done. You can see what it's done is it's moved the value over by 2. And if you look in here, it's added two spaces in there. The 20, if you can see, the line that's extended. I'll try and highlight that on the video. But you can see that it's added two spaces at the very beginning. Let's go back to the next one. Because it knows it's going to put 
the last four there, and then it adds the first two of the value float, and it leaves two spaces in there. It's kind of interesting the way it works. It must load it from the right side of the string to the left side instead of the other way. Depending on what you're trying to send, you can run into problems. I'm going to do one more thing here, and we're going to add a, a way to print these characters out one at a time. So what we have here is we have a loop, and we're going to print these values out one at a time. And so I've set up an, a variable called x, just an integer, and we're going to count from 0 to 5. In this, in this um, array up here, in this character array, we have six values but the values are actually 0 to 5, not 1 to 6. So when you're reading them out one at a time here, results 0, result 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's actually 0 through 5. So x is going to count from 0 to 5. When it hits 6, it'll stop. And it's going to print these out to the, to the loop. I've left this at 8, even though this is 6. It set all the values on the left of those eight, and it inserted two spaces to the right. So now that Arduino believes that, res that this result is only six long. So when we go to print out result, I'll show you what happens. You can see that the values are still good over here, it's still getting the data just fine. If I clear this, it's still coming in fine because in the the double to string, let me shut off the auto scroll. And the double to string, we're still sending the right values up, but the Arduino itself would, would believe that the array is 2.04 because we've defined it as six characters. So if you were to use it going forward, you might get the wrong value. But at the same time, you go back in here, you don't get any errors. What I find is strange is that when you print it, Somehow it knows in here, it knows this result is now 8 instead of 6. My plan is to look a little bit more into how Arduino takes care of arrays. I'm interested in how this knows now by using this function here that result is now longer than six characters. But that's for another video. But that's one of my issues with this plan. I do understand that um, this function, this double the string, uses memory more efficiently. But when you're just getting into this, um, the Mega has so much memory, it really doesn't matter. At least not that I've ever found. And this can be a little bit confusing at first. This doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You should get familiar with arrays and anything you can. But if you're just looking to send a float value up for display, this works pretty good. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.